Week 5 Airflow Here are some important introductory comments. Virtually everyone, when they speak, breathes in through the mouth. And that aquamarine color going up at a 45 degree angle indicates inhalation through the mouth and then speech begins, a time moving as seconds from left to right. What you are going to have to learn to do is to let some air come out of your mouth first before you speak. Now, most people don't do that, but that's going to be a requirement. That air that is coming out is going to be a passive outflow of air. Now, the red dot indicates that that airflow is going to transition smoothly into speech. Let's look at this passive outflow of air. Let's study its role in fluency. There are three important concepts that I want to bring to your attention here with respect to that passive outflow of air. It is only when the air is coming out of your mouth that the tension comes off your vocal cords. The air going in, the inhalation, is air, of course, that you need to breathe to stay alive. It's air that you need to speak. But in terms of taking tension off your cords, it doesn't do very much. The passive outflow of air is not used to speak. The passive outflow of air is used to relax and open your vocal cords before you speak. Let me repeat those two notions. The passive outflow of air, which we're going to be talking about, is not used to speak. It has a different role. The passive outflow of air is used to relax and open your vocal cords before you speak. You have plenty of air left for speaking. But this first air that's coming out, this passive outflow of air, is used to relax and open your vocal cords before you speak. Here are some examples of passive flows in this young woman who will give these examples, and her mouth is open slightly, and she's breathing very gently in and out through, your, through her mouth. There's not very much for you to see here. The air is totally passive, and the mouth is open. The passive outflow of air is like a river that flows directly into speech. A river of air that flows directly into speech. Here's an example that I like to give. It comes from swimming, competitive swimming. Here's a woman uh, on the starting platform. She's in her pre-dive phase. She's uh, got her hands on her hips, and she's uh, sort of centering herself and getting ready. This is equivalent to the passive outflow of air. She's sort of uh, relaxing herself. And then, of course, the gun goes off, and she dives in, and that would be equivalent to speaking. Okay, now let's go back to this pre-dive phase. What's going on in her mind? What is she thinking as she has her hands on her hips? Is she thinking, dive in? If she is, do you think she can relax? Similarly, if you are thinking of the first word during the passive outflow of air, do you think you can relax? Thinking of the first word as the air is passively coming out, is a no-no. Those three X's indicate that. And notice that the speech that emerges is fractured. Well, what do I want you then to do? Well, what I want you to think about, during the entire time the air is passively coming out of your mouth, is that you are resting. 
Let me say that again. What I want you to think about during the entire time the air is passively coming out of your mouth is that you are resting. Thinking about resting. Oh, three checks there. That's desirable. The speech is fine. That is desirable. That is required. I want a mental intent to rest on a passive outflow of air. A mental intent to rest on a passive outflow of air. Your body will follow your mental intent. Your body will follow your mental intent. If you mentally intend to rest as the air is passively flowing out of your mouth, your vocal cords will go far apart and will slump. They will be as far from a locking as they can be. In reality, then, you see, the passive outflow of air is in fact the vehicle upon which you superimpose your mental intent to rest. It is the mental intent to rest, not the passive outflow of air, that creates the great subtraction of tension from the vocal cords. Now, that really bears repeating. It is the mental intent to rest, not the passive outflow of air, that creates the great subtraction of tension from the vocal cords. Similarly, it is the mental intent to start slowly that prevents the buildup of tension that would be associated with a quick start. So we come to something very interesting here. This is what goes on when a person speaks and a person uses this technique. The physical tension comes on the vocal cords as the result of the mental intent to speak. So in other words, the instant you start thinking, I'm going to speak, that's when you're tensing your cords. Even before you speak, you're tensing because you've had the desire to speak, the intent to speak. And then that physical tension which has been built up comes off the vocal cords as the result of the mental intent to rest. And then finally, the physical tension stays off the vocal cords as the result of the mental intent to start slowly. That's why we call it intent therapy, which is a far more accurate term than airflow therapy. Our sport, then, consists of a passive outflow of air with a superimposed mental intent to rest, followed by a slowed first word, which of course occurs as the result of the mental intent to start slowly. We learn the airflow component of intent therapy in six steps. Each step builds on the one before it, and try to do much of your practice with a monitor. Here's the first step. Here's an example of a mental intent to rest on passive outflows of air. You'll be noticing that she'll be resting mentally as the air is coming out. She's not going to say anything. She's just exhibiting mental intent to rest. So she's breathing in and she's now resting. She's breathing in and she's now resting. She's breathing in and she's now resting. Set up a mirror so you can see yourself. It would look something like this. It's very important that you'll be noticing yourself resting as the air is coming out. People tend to forget the mental intent to rest, and that's not a good idea. Practice this now looking in a mirror, and so if you don't have a mirror, get one, because I'm going to coach you as you're breathing. So don't look at the screen. There's not going to be anything to see at this exercise as I'm coaching you. Okay, here goes. Breathe in through your mouth and just rest as the air comes out. Just let out the comfortable amount of air and stop. Don't try to push air out. 
Breathe in again a little bit through your mouth and rest. Breathe in again, please, and rest as the air passively comes out of your mouth. See, so you're maintaining an acute awareness of a powerful intent to rest on a passive outflow of air. Breathe in again, please, and just think about resting as that air comes out of your mouth. And one more time, breathe in a little bit through your mouth, and rest. Practice this exercise with the mirror for 10 minutes each day in weeks 5 and 6. Here's a second step. Here are examples of the mental intent to rest on passive outflows of air before monosyllables in isolation. That is, monosyllables spoken all alone. Okay, did you notice her resting? Okay, back to the mirror and practice this now as I coach you. I'll give you the words, okay? Here we go. The word is pie. Okay, now forget about pie, just think only about resting. Breathe in through your mouth. Think about resting as the air is coming out. Now say pie. The next word is boy. Breathe in through your mouth. Think only about resting, 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 resting. Now say boy. Breathe in through your mouth. The word is dog. Think about resting, resting, resting. Now say dog. The word is jump. Breathe in through your mouth. Think only about resting, resting, resting. Say jump. Notice that the mouth your mouth and the young lady's mouth is in a neutral position as the air passively exits the mouth. And the reason for that is that you're supposed to be thinking about resting. Let's watch it again. You'll see that her mouth is in a neutral position as the air is coming out of her mouth. She's thinking about resting. If the mouth were not in a neutral position as the air was coming out, it would be in some other position. What position would it be in? Well, it would be in the position required for the first sound of that first word because she were or you were thinking of that word instead of thinking about resting. If your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your jaw, your palate, etc., are in the position of the first word before you say it, what would be the position of your vocal cords? They would also be in the position of the first word, and you would be tensing your vocal cords before time zero. And that's called preforming. Preforming is the very big mistake. Preforming is why you stutter. When you are preforming, you are using the air to speak instead of using it to relax your vocal cords. I'll say that again. When you are preforming, you are using the air to speak instead of using it to relax your vocal cords. The solution to the problem of preforming is simple. Resting prevents preforming. When you are resting, you are literally fooling your brain into believing you are just taking another breath. 
so your brain mounts no tension on your vocal cords before time zero. It's a trick. You are literally fooling a part of your brain into believing you are just taking another breath. So your brain mounts no tension on your vocal cords before time zero. Now practice this exercise with the mirror for 10 minutes each day in weeks 5 and 6 and use list D from the workbook. Here's the third step. Here are examples of the mental intent to rest on passive outflows of air now before multisyllables spoken in isolation. Yesterday Perhaps Because Tomorrow Another Practice this now, looking in the mirror as I coach you. I'll give you the words. The first word is yesterday. Breathe in through the mouth. Air out calmly. Think about resting and we'll say it together. Yesterday. Remember, it has to be at 108 syllables per minute. Yesterday, yesterday, yesterday. Okay, let's try it again. Breathe in through your mouth. Let the air out passively. Think about resting and yesterday. The next word is perhaps. Breathe in through your mouth. Let the air out calmly. See yourself resting in the mirror. Perhaps. The next word is although. Breathe in through your mouth. See yourself resting as the air is coming out, coming out. Although. Remember that your mouth must be in a neutral position as the air is passively coming out of your mouth. If it's not, you're thinking of that word. You are preforming. Let's try the next word. It's tomorrow. Breathe in through the mouth. Let the air out passively. Think about resting, resting. Tomorrow. Next word is Chicago. Breathe in through the mouth. Let the air out passively, passively, passively. Chicago. Practice this exercise with the mirror for 10 minutes each day in weeks 5 and 6 and use list B from the workbook. Here's the fourth step. Here are examples of the mental intent to rest on passive outflows of air before sentences that all begin with monosyllable words. Monosyllable word start sentences. Where are my keys? I went to the movies. Can you tell me the time? I see a small dog. Practice this now, reading each sentence and then looking in the mirror as I coach you. I will give you the sentences. Here's the first one. Do you like pizza? All right, breathe in through your mouth. Let the air passively think about resting, resting, resting. Now, just one word, do. You like pizza. Remember, the first word is spoken as if it was the only word you were going to say, with the rest spoken as an afterthought. Here we go with the second sentence. That was really interesting. Breathe in through your mouth. Think about resting, think about resting. That was really interesting. 
Next sentence. Park your car in the garage. Breathe in through your mouth. Let the air out passively. Think about resting, resting. Now just one word. Park your car in the garage. Right. Show me the way to go home. Breathe in through your mouth. Now only rest. Think about resting, resting. Now only one word. Show me the way to go home. Would you like to take a walk? You're breathing in. The air is passively coming out. You're thinking only about resting, only about resting. Now one word, would. You like to take a walk. Practice this exercise with the mirror for 10 minutes each day in weeks 5 and 6 and use list A from the workbook. Here are some mistakes to be avoided. The first one, and most serious, of course, is preforming. The young woman will exaggerate preforming here for our benefit. Here's an example. Boy. Face. Okay, no neutral position of the mouth. Go. Here's another example. Inhaling prior to the first word. The person breathes in, lets some air come out passively, thinks about resting, and then just before they speak, they take in a quick breath. That quick little inhalation completely cancels out the positive effects of that passive airflow which has just preceded it. That's a no-no. Watch very carefully that you don't take even the slightest inhalation that will cancel out the effect of the airflow. Here are some examples of inhaling prior to the first word. You have to look carefully now. I was walking down the street. Do you want to go to the park? Where are my keys? Go to the store. Next example of a mistake would be to inhale during the comma. The person has breathed in, let some air come out passively, said the first word, and in the comma they inhale. Whenever you inhale, you make a new sentence. So by inhaling in the comma, the person has effectively created a new sentence and may stutter on the next word, which has become the first word of a new sentence because they inhaled. Now you have to watch very closely because again even the tiniest inhalation is always perceived by the brain as a new sentence. So here are an examples. Do you know what time it is? I was walking down the street. Where are my keys? I like pepperoni pizza. Stopping the airflow before the first word. Remember we pointed out that that airflow must smoothly transition into the first word. It is a river of air. And here the young woman is stopping the airflow. It's rather obvious she's actually closing her mouth. Do you know what time it is? Where are my keys? I want to go to the store. Go get my bag. I like pepperoni pizza. Here's step number five. Here are examples of the mental intent to rest on passive outflows of air before sentences that all begin with long words, multi-syllable word start sentences. Perhaps the sun will shine today. Although you can't be sure. Yesterday I took a walk. 
tomorrow I'll take another walk. Practice this now looking in the mirror as I coach you. I will give you the sentences. Here's the first. Perhaps the sun will shine. Breathe in through your mouth. Look in the mirror. Think about resting. Perhaps the sun will shine. Here's the next one. I'll let you say it. I won't coach you. The sentence, as you can see, is, although you can't be sure. Now, look in the mirror. Breathe in. Think about resting. The next sentence is, Chicago is the windy city. Breathe in through your mouth. Think about resting. Yesterday, I took a walk. Breathe in through your mouth. Think about resting. Jigsaw puzzles can be fun. Breathe in through your mouth. Think about resting as the air is coming out. Practice this exercise with the mirror for 10 minutes each day in weeks 5 and 6 and use list C from the workbook. Week 7 and 8. Step 6. Here are examples of the mental intent to rest on passive outflows of air and slowed first words in continuous reading is one of our most important exercises. A lot of continuous reading with perfect examples of technique, sometimes taking long sentences and breaking them into phrases, slowing the first word of each phrase. But, one particular day, a water pipe broke in the office above. And, the water seeped slowly through the ceiling and into the wooden door. The door was swollen and stuck in the door frame. But I didn't know it because the seepage had been slow. And I couldn't see it. Practice this exercise for 30 minutes each day in week 7 and 8. It's difficult to use a mirror in this exercise, so a monitor is very important. Also in week 7 and 8, as part of continuous reading, Practice mid-sentence reapplications, low energy speech, and toughening. Consult the manual for details. Practice with a monitor as much as possible. In addition to the rules for airflow, remember the rules for slowed first words. At least once each week, watch this program, this new program that you are watching right now to refresh your memory regarding all parts of the technique and mistakes that you can make as well. In weeks 9 and from the weeks continuing, daily for at least one month, listen to the relaxation before retiring. Also in the weeks that follow, use the techniques in conversation exercises and in giving speeches. Refer to the manual for the complete sequence of exercises. Also in weeks 9, and continuing for several months, use the motivator to remind you to use technique in all situations. Follow the directions for using the motivator found in the manual. Don't forget to obey the six rules for slow starts, Obey the six steps for airflow. Listen to the relaxation. Practice one hour daily. Use the motivator and use a monitor. Practice daily and success will be yours. This is Dr. Martin Schwartz wishing you the very best in your practice program.